Hello, and welcome back to the Iron Man. So I decided to do my god statues for the month. Um, we do have a couple days left in July. However, um, I'm not going to be doing any more of the beach event and getting any more construction XP, so I might as well just do the god statues. And there is level 70 construction. I'm not sure if you unlock anything cool for that. Oh, the void stairs back, grand master quest requirement, um, and a bunch of like dungeon stuff. Well, after our god statues, we were really close to getting 40 prayer, and thankfully I had a prayer daily challenge. So I'll claim those, and there is 40 prayer. I think that's protect from magic? Oh no, that's protect from range. Right. Still useful. Oh yeah, I also got uh, 50,000 shattered anima as a drop. I think this is the currency that you use to unlock bladed dive in that one minigame, whatever it's called, Shattered Worlds, I think. Um, 50,000 seems like a lot, but I also know... You need a lot of currency in that minigame to buy stuff, so hopefully we keep getting more from these challenges and can just unlock that ability. You know, I can't believe that I've never been down here before, um, but I had an Anku task, and I figured out that Ankus actually hit pretty hard, so even though I brought a full inventory of salmon, I'm going to need to go bank and get some more in order to finish off this task. But I've never finished the Stronghold of Security before. I know we did the Stronghold of Player Safety, the one with all the... Um, the giant beetle dudes that gives you 10k at the end, but you also get 10k for running through this and finding all the chests. We're just so spoiled by uh, Mig's caravan and those awesome quest rewards now that the stronghold of security just no longer feels like a necessity for new accounts anymore like it used to. We're about to unlock a pretty significant upgrade here. So it has taken a while to level up my melee through Slayer, um, but we get 40 attack, which means we can now wield adamant weaponry. Um, so I'm going to immediately make the upgrade to Adamant Claws. But it's taken a long time to level up our melee stats because for whatever reason, um, at least on these lower level Slayer tasks, almost everything is weak to magic. So even though my magic XP is split between magic and defense, those have been both going up um, pretty well, but my ranged and my melee stats are really lagging behind. Um, however, we now have add a year, and that's going to help a lot because my accuracy just sucked, even against level 50 cave crawlers with Mithril. Well, I know that I probably shouldn't, but I made a return to fishing in order to get the eggs, and, uh, well, I got myself a golden leaping salmon egg. Well, now that I have some eggs, it's time to do some work on our aquarium. So, one important thing to do is to build a diving suit. And unfortunately, I only have the construction level to build the uh, first tier of suit here, but we still have a diving suit, which means we can now enter the bathysphere. Um, and also, just for fun, I did get the materials to build the twin anchors here. Not necessary uh, by any means, but I just wanted the aquarium to be a little bit more full. Now, we need five golden fish eggs total in order to unlock the perk that I want to unlock. But after you spend a certain number of prawn points, you get an additional golden fish egg for free. Um, so we will be getting our fifth here soon. And uh, here is one of the two perks that I really wanted. Rod fish without using fishing bait. So we will no longer need any fishing bait to catch fish in Menaphos. And now we are on to tier two because um, we did all of the tier one perks, which means we get a golden mystery egg. Hopefully it's not one that's easy to catch. It looks like we got golden monkfish eggs. And now finally, here is the other perk that I really wanted to get. Fly fish without using feathers. So now I can catch any kind of fish without using bait, which is pretty sweet, So, because I don't have to pay for it anymore. So now I get to open all of these prawn balls because I, uh, I got the four easiest eggs out of the way, so I, if I get a mystery egg out of these, I'm not going to get um, trout salmon, leaping trout, or leaping salmon, which is a good thing. We're not even halfway through, and I've already gotten two golden mystery eggs. I wonder how many I'll get by the end of these. Okay, here's the last few. Um, I did get one additional golden mystery egg, and, and yes, I did spam click through all those. I didn't just sit and wait. Um, so I'm going to add the rest of the decorations into um, the bathysphere, so now we can use them all. Uh, we also got 100 baron sharks out of that, which is pretty decent. So this is, this is the good stuff down here, 100 baron sharks. And then if we uh, open these three eggs, first one is tuna. The second one is leaping sturgeon. That actually sucks because, um, you know, Barbarian fishing is good XP, so I wouldn't have minded going back to that for the golden sturgeon egg. And then this final one is golden shark, which is awesome, because that is one of the more painful eggs to get. Okay, I tried to decorate as best as I could. Um, honestly, I just ended up throwing a lot of stuff around, trying to get all the decorations in there at the end. So, uh, yeah, let's go down there and see what it looks like. 
Okay, and here's the finished results of our aquarium. It is teeming with life. Um, so it's mostly decorative down here, although we can open the treasure chest for a clue scroll each week. Um, and then what you can do is after you've caught every single fish or received every single egg, I should say, since you don't necessarily catch all of them, but get some of them from prawn balls, you can pull the plug to prestige and then you get to do it all again because, uh, well, if you love fishing, I guess that's what you do. So I found myself in need of anti-poisons because I keep getting these cave crawler tasks. Um, and unfortunately, you need 48 herb lore to make your own super antis, which we don't have. So <laughs> we're diving deep into our bag of Iron Man tricks and just looting this spawn here by the observatory. And it's only a one-dose anti-poison, but um, <laughs> to be honest, I can't really think of a better way to get super antis or, or an equivalent right now. So I finally got a uh, Slayer task that you can do it in the Slayer Tower, which is great because the best thing about killing things in the Slayer Tower is you get these Slayer contracts, um, which will match up exactly with how many kills that you have to do on your task. And when you complete them, you can get a reward of either GP or um, some bonus combat XP. And so when I did my first Iron Man account, I actually camped Banshee contracts for, I think, an entire day. I did like a ton of them, and I made, you know, a couple hundred K cash because this was before the uh, Quest Point shop came out, and it was a lot harder to make money back then. But if you aren't doing quests, this is a pretty decent way to make early game cash. It's uh, significant money for an early account when your money-making options are limited. I didn't necessarily see this one coming, but we just hit 60 combat, and I got a little pop-up message that says we now have access to War's Retreat. I may be a little bit weak to start PVMing and killing bosses outside of Croesus, is probably the only one I can handle at the moment. Um, however, we now have access to it. Well, I keep missing important level ups, but we just got 50 magic. So the great thing about hitting these uh, big milestone levels like 50 magic is it is going to be um, a weapon upgrade, or a weapon tier upgrade, I should say. So the Mystic Wand and the Mystic Book are the level 50 magic weapons. Um, I was afraid the only way to buy them in a store was to get them from the Magic Guild in Yanil, which you need 66 magic to enter, so it's not very useful <laughs> to someone with 50 magic. But it looks like you can um, also buy them from the Champions Guild here. So I'm going to go check that out after this task. Oh yeah, it's true. They added a magic seller to the Champions Guild, which is cool because it, you know, historically was always um, just melee and range gear. So it looks like I could buy uh, Mystic Armor too. I'd need 50 defense for that, so I'm, you know, we'll hold off and we'll just get the Mystic Wand and Orb for now. And this should be a pretty significant upgrade because the higher you get in your combat stats, um, the more significant the upgrade as you reach a new tier. So yeah, Mystic Wand and Orb, um, big upgrade. Okay, fishing progress update. So due to house sitting, I've just been uh, AFKing here at Menaphos, either on my laptop or on my phone for the past couple of days. We did manage to get up to 73 fishing, which means we're now catching the um, beltfish, which are the highest tier fish in uh, Menaphos that you can catch. And also I got up to level two in every single district in uh, Menaphos, which means all the bank chests are unlocked. So unfortunately, even though I made it a goal to unlock that Minifite gift offering, um, there was one day where I was just too busy and I wasn't able to get on RuneScape, so I did not get all seven days of uh, last weekly challenge. Um, but this week, the big reward is a Death Touch Dart. If we get all the way up to uh, completing all the days, I'm, I'll do my best. One thing I might be able to do is try to get some, myself some Viswax to extend these challenges to make this more doable. But we'll see. I'll do my best. So it's time to admit to having another extremely stupid moment. I've been buying my daily runes here from Betty in Port Sarim, right? And then sometimes if I'm feeling extra ambitious, I will go to Varrock and buy from Aubrey as well. So she only sells 300 of each elemental rune, 100 mind and body runes. So it's really not a huge stock. And it's the exact same with uh, Aubrey and Varrock, same stock and everything. So in my mind, all the shops that sell 1,000 of a rune, which would be way more convenient to buy daily runes for, um, those are the ones in the wilderness, on Lunar Isle, and on Apatol. And I can't access any of those places, right? So that's just out of the question. Right here in the Void Knight Outpost, no requirements to access at all other than membership, is a fully stocked rune store, at least for the elemental ones. First time ever making Viswax. Um, we only get 92. 
I don't think there's any way for us to get the full 100. We just don't have the stock of rune yet in the higher tier runes. But uh, 92 ain't bad for only using the cheap stuff. And of course, I'm going to extend agility. It's um, one of the more difficult skills to level up. So I got a ghoul slayer task, and I decided to try out ravenous ghouls down in the mausoleum. Um, if you don't know, these are, you know, safe spottable, so you don't actually uh, have to take any damage from them, despite the fact that they're they're quite high level. And my accuracy sucks, so these aren't necessarily great XP per hour, but the reason I wanted to try them out is their drops are pretty good. They dropped the full split bark set. I was able to get myself the helm, the legs, and the boots. Um, no torso yet, and we're like 50 kills in, and um, we're probably not going to be able to get one by the end of the task. But uh, Split Bark isn't super useful because we are about to hit 50 defense, and um, that's the level at which you can wear Mystic. But the sweet thing about it is it has a pretty decent alk value. I mean, check this out. 24k if you alk the Split Bark legs. That ain't bad, and it's even more if you get a torso. So fishing is not the only thing that I've been doing while AFK, and I've done a, a wee little bit of archaeology as well. And I was able to finish up my first ever collection so I believe what we can do is just uh, contribute it here with the Zerosian Emissary. And um, our reward is we get, well, to be completely honest, I forget what this does. We get something and we get a whole bunch of chronotes, which is uh, really what I was after. Oh, and the reason why my layout keeps changing is I've saved two layouts. One is for active play slash combat, and my other layout is... Um, it's set up this way so the screen doesn't have a lot going on so I can make the window smaller and um, AFK easier. But uh, this is the one that I stick with most of the time. Anyway, I wanted to go to the shop here and check out what we can get with Chronotes. The main thing I really wanted is just a larger soil box because only being able to fit 50 um, has been kind of driving me crazy. Uh, it looks like I do have to unlock the assistant qualification first before we can unlock our soil box. So it is a little bit hidden, but the qualifications for the assistant that I'm missing are 40 archaeology, um, 25 restored artifacts, and um, 25 excavated artifacts, which obviously we will get along the way to having to restore all those artifacts. Also, um, every, all of you probably knew this already, but this unlocks a new relic power, so if I offer it, and then if I manage the powers here at the uh, monolith, we will have a new ability unlocked that we can use, um, which is unexpected diplomacy. 10% increase to all reputation gains. Um, so this includes the Heart, Farming Guild, Metaphos, and Mazcab. So not a bad one to switch to right before we're about to grind a whole bunch of Metaphos fishing. In order to unlock the Assistant qualification, I'm just going to work on finishing up the Zemirakian 1 set. So I just need one more Crest of Dagon. I used all mine already on doing that mystery thing that you do. Um, the Masks and a couple other things. Shouldn't take too long to get those. So I'm not sure if there's going to be a pop-up or anything, but when I restore this lantern, this is going to be my 25th restored artifact, which is everything that we need for assistant qualification. Well, I guess I wouldn't know if anything popped up, would I, because I don't even have my chat bar open. Um, it doesn't look like it, but uh, let's go check out what's going on in the Archaeology Guild and see if we can unlock some new stuff. Okay, there we go. So we should get a... Uh, an effective level up in the Archaeology Guild after this um, as an assistant now. Okay, now it's official. We are an assistant, so that gives us access to uh, send out research teams. It's kind of like a daily thing. Um, you pay Chronotes, and your researchers come back with, um, I think, just resources and Archaeology XP, and some new rewards in the reward shop, which is what I'm really after. Well, it's my first time in the Black Knight's base. It sure was a long run to get here, so I really hope I have all of the items that I need for the um, Zimrakian Archaeology Collection. And it looks like I do, so there's a fat stack of Chronotes. Well, we actually have enough to buy any three of these things. Um, I don't know when we'll need material storage, but I think that I can squeak out one more material collection before we're really going to need this. So I'm just going to start with soil box upgrade as just like a quality of life improvement. So I keep finding these um, penguins hiding in Mauritania Swamp. I don't know why, but just the past couple of weeks they keep popping up and it, it reminds me I really need to do those penguin quests so that we can start collecting um, penguin points because obviously for Iron Man and really for any account, Penguin points are a great way to train some of the harder to train or slower skills. Okay, this should be the last kill. And uh, yeah, there's 50 defense. That's a big one. It means Mystic Gear for Magic, Rune Armor for Melee, 
And for range, I think it's blue dragon hide. And all of this stuff is attainable for me. You can buy mystic and blue dehide in the champions guild. Um, you can buy rune as well, but I, you know, I have 50 smithing. I'm just, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> no need to buy it. So that's that's three new tiers of armor unlocked for each combat style. I just got a really weird drop here in my banshees task. Deployable herb burner. You know, I'm I'm vaguely familiar with what this is, but I. I quite honestly don't completely remember what it does. I'm assuming you deploy it and then it burns herbs, but why you would want to do that, I'm not sure. We'll have to try it out. Okay, so I'm checking out what the deployable herb burner does on the wiki, and it looks like you burn herbs on it, and it gives you 10 times the XP that you would get for cleaning it. So this might be a good incentive to start picking up some of the lower level herbs, such as Guam, Terramin, Marantil, you know, anything that we're not going to make a potion out of, um, this is a good way to just get some XP from that. Okay, I should have a big level coming in. I, th I think after this jackal kill, maybe after the next one. Yep, it was after the next one. I got really tired of killing dogs in uh, McGruber's Wood, so I'm killing the jackals here instead. And there's 50 Slayer, which is um, Blood Velts and uh, also Duradel. We are nowhere near the combat level required for Duradel, unfortunately, but when we get there someday, so it turns out I was able to get Bloodvelds for my very next task, right after getting 50 Slayer. And I like Bloodvelds. Unlike all of the other tasks I've done so far, the difference between um, them and Bloodvelds is with these guys, the XP isn't terrible. So we ran into a bit of an impasse. My next task is Lesser Demons, um, which are a high enough level in defense where I'm going to struggle killing them with a tier 40 weapon. So I'm probably better off getting to at least 50 range and um, getting a, a ranged equipment upgrade before I start this task. Okay, so I didn't quite make it to 50 range, but this is the method that I'm doing. I'm just killing Banshees, you kill 160 of them, and you can turn in the contract for 37k cash, um, because we are so cash poor at the moment, because um, buying those runes is expensive, man. I thought this was a good idea, um, but I did want to point out, if you look in my chat bar here, I unlocked the cremation ability, which I believe means we can now do, um, we can burn bones on bone fires. Okay, that took a while, but there is 50 ranged. So we can either go the magic shortbow route, or we can go the rune crossbow route. Um, I haven't decided which is the better out of those two options, probably whichever one will be easier to get ammo for. So now that we're 50 range, uh, we're back here at Champions Guild, and I'm going to pick up my blue dehyde. And I did not know this was the case, but you can also buy um, tier 50 weapons now. So you can buy all of the like rune stuff, rune crossbows, and the magic shortbow. So I have almost my full setup now. You may be noticing that I'm, I'm missing the blue dehyde top, and the reason for that is we haven't done Dragon Slayer and. In order to get the blue dehyde top, you do need to um, unlock Oziac as a store option, because that's the only place to buy it. Okay, this is the Knight's Sword. Unfortunately, I did not do this quest early enough for the um, smithing XP to be useful. Like, 12.7k smithing XP, that seems like so much, right? Yeah, I barely made a dent. Oh, okay. Maybe I overstated that a bit. We got one level out of it. <laughs> but it's hardly the level 1 all the way up to 29 that you can get if you use this right away before you start smithing. Anyway, I did that quest because it is loosely tied to the Giant Dwarf, and for no other reason. Okay, there's the Giant Dwarf done. It was still a long quest, but it was a lot less painful than I remember it being, mostly because there is a metal bank directly underneath the um, Consortium Hall um, in Keldegrim here. So you can just run downstairs and grab your bars and ores. You don't have to go all the way to a bank and then run back. Okay, we now have access to the crossbow stall in Keldegrim. Te did we technically have access to it already? Probably, but um, doing the intro quest and treating that as a requirement to do Keldegram things were, you know, was the motivation I I needed to do the giant dwarf. So we're just going to uh, we're going to live with that. So I'm gonna buy the adamant bolts, and I'm also gonna buy the mithril bolts just because that's not a lot. And I'll just have to be really careful to always queue my abilities before firing a bolt, so we don't run out of ammo because I can obviously only get 50 of these a day. Okay, we just completed our 49th task in a row. And I think I want to do something for number 50. So once you do your 50th task in a row, you get a big Slayer Point boost. So let's pull this up really quick and take a look. So if, if I were to do my 50th task with Mazshna and just kept continuing with what I've been doing, 
I would get 60 points, which is okay. But if I get to Cheldar and I do my 50th task with her, I'm going to get 150 Slayer points instead. That's a pretty massive boost. And also the other thing that I want to consider is um, the melee XP with doing Mastina tasks is frankly quite terrible. He hardly assigns any tasks that are weak to melee, and the ones that are like cave crawlers, and the XP is just bad. You hardly get any melee XP for doing these tasks. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to train melee off task. I know, shocking, but my goal is to get 50 attack and 50 strength, and somewhere around that range we're also going to hit uh, 75 combat. It may take a little bit more than 50 attack and strength. I haven't done the math exactly, but um, yeah, I'm going to be training my melee stats outside of Slayer. I already have a method picked out that I'm going to do, and uh, everything should be great. But that's going to have to wait for the next episode, because we're done for this week. So that is all for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then.